Good morning, church, and welcome to this online service. As you well know, I started off this month with our month theme called Persistence. Uh, or not persistence, it's actually perseverance. But this morning, my message is the persistent prayer. Continuing in prayer, being uh, const constant in prayer and persevering through the circumstances. I believe that in the circumstances and a tool to persevere is to keep on praying. And we see that in the Bible, but before we go further, let's close our eyes. Lord, thank you for this morning and thank you for this day that you've created. Lord, to give us a new word afresh from the throne room. Lord, I pray that this message that is living in my heart, Lord, that it will reach the people on the other side of the screen. Lord, that we would know that these words are not words from William, but these words are words that you are speaking to them. Lord, therefore, guide me, help me. Holy Spirit, everything that I'm saying may, may be according to your will, according to your ways. Lord, that it might not glorify me, but that everything would give honor to your name and your name alone. I pray that in your name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So this morning, my message is persistent prayer, continuing in prayer. In life, we struggle sometimes to persevere and to keep on keeping on and, and to, to face the trials of life. But I believe that something that can help us is prayer. It is something that God gave us. And we read about it in the Word of God. So many times about people praying. And therefore this morning, I want to refresh our memory about how necessary prayer is. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17 says it in three words. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Therefore, whatever we do, wherever we go, we should keep on praying. Because our life, whether we like it or not, it's glorifying God in some way. And it's worshipping. And sometimes our worship is, is the wrong way of worshipping. Therefore, when we expose a bad character trait, when we do something that's out of line with who we are, we're still giving that to the Lord. Have you ever, have you ever sat at a restaurant and they, they gave you food? And when they put it down, you can see it's not the standard. It's not right. You can see, and therefore I'm not complaining. I'm saying that this is what's happening to our worship. We are giving God worship with our life. And sometimes it doesn't glorify His name. Therefore, Cain and Abel worshipped God. But one's offering wasn't as good. Because the heart wasn't right. Therefore, prayer connects us with God's heart. And if we keep on keeping on, we listen to God's heart. The single thing that helps us to know God is the same thing that believers do the least. And that is prayer. That is praying. It helps us to connect with God because when we pray, we get to know God. How? I just sat with a woman this week and she said she doesn't know how to hear the Lord's voice. And let me tell you, when you read the Amplified, now I'm just giving you a hint maybe. But when you read the Amplified, it gives you little words and, and, and a brief um, explanation of what the word is trying to say. So when you go read the Amplified, and I would encourage you to go read Colossians 3 verse 23 to 25. You'll just see in the brackets... It really helps you to see further than just the scripture. When someone tells me something, I read something more. So therefore, when I speak to God and I say, Lord, please help me with this regard. And I say, Lord, I'm facing this mountain or I'm going through this valley. Whatever I'm facing, I need to persevere, but I need to be persistent in prayer. Prayer is knowing more of God, but at the same time, it's also giving a request. Saying, Lord... This is my request this day, that you would help me, that you would heal my family, that you would guide me into your truth. If this is a request, then we need to wait for his reply. And that's sometimes the thing that we struggle to do is to wait on God's reply. And in that waiting period, we want to exchange God's no for our yes. So when you want to persevere through your trials, through the struggles of life, whatever the case may be, we need to wait on the Lord and not substitute, not exchange and switch His no for our yes. 
Because behind his no lies a greater yes than ours. Prayer is worship. Therefore, wherever I go, whatever I do, when I am walking and I see someone and I experience that I need to voice God's voice in this moment, I want to go pray for them. We need to worship and glorify God because there's a thing called oxytocin. And that is a connectedness. So when I go and I pray for someone, they start receiving the prayer. But when others look, it connects people. I just saw on, on, on the news, in a newspaper that at Woodbank, someone had, had a great need for prayer. And this woman was downtrodden. She didn't know where to go. She, she was in a park and she was lost. And a group of white and black and colored people all went together to pray for this woman. Therefore, prayer connects. Prayer is worship. When I go and I pray for someone, I'm glorifying God. And everyone sees how I'm glorifying God. And it's not about me. It's about giving honor to the one who's going to answer the prayer. But in the midst of all what prayer is, it increases faith. Because if I pray and I offer my request to the Lord, Lord, help me with this regard. Help me with my trial that I'm facing. Help me with this storm that I'm going through. I'm needing to wait on the Lord. Because when the disciples was on the boat on that sea, the waves were crashing. The thunders hit. The wind was blowing. But in the midst of it all, they were waiting for someone to arrive. They were waiting on the Lord. And then when the Lord woke up, He said, Why are you frightened? Why are you so small-minded? Where's your faith? And that's where we are sometimes. We find ourselves in positions where we say, Lord, you need to work now. Because technology has got a new thing that's going on. It's, everything can happen in the blink of an eye. With a click of a finger, someone can arrive at my home and offer me food, Mr. Mr. Foods. And therefore, an Uber can get me and everything is so fast. Everything is right here in front of us. And everything can happen as quick as like I said, in the, blink of an eye, in the blink of an eye. But therefore, prayer and how it works with God is a bit different. Therefore, let us not lose what prayer originally is. And that's waiting on the Lord. And we're going to get to that in a minute. Because waiting on the Lord and being persistent in what I'm doing will help me in this trial of perseverance. I need to wait on the Lord and it increases faith. Because I'm still relying. What I'm facing I'm still knowing, hoping, believing that God will do something for me. That is called faith. And it increases faith because the moment when His mighty hand does something, stirs the water, it might be like that man that sat beside that bath. For 38 years, he was lame. But then God came. Jesus came. And sometimes it feels like he's four days late, but let me tell you, he's still on time. It will increase your faith. That's why the rest were crying, because they couldn't believe that he could do such miraculous works. But let me tell you, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He still works in ways that we as people cannot see, but he will make a way. I believe that. James 5 verse 16 to 18 says, Therefore confess your sins to one another. That means your false steps, your, your, your wrong choices that you've made. And pray for one another that you may be healed. When someone prays for me, I feel healed. I feel like God is still working in me and something is being done. By the Holy Spirit, I am being renewed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Prayer works. It's got great power as the prayer is working. It's doing something in you. It has got great power. 
Elijah was a man with a nature like ours and he prayed fervently that it might not rain and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Verse 18, then he prayed again and heaven gave rain and the earth bore its fruits. Therefore, prayer can do miraculous things. Prayer can stop hardship, but prayer can also bring blessings. James 4 verse 3 says, You pray and do not receive because you pray wrongly to spend all that, would, that what God would give you on your own passions and desires. That's sometimes what we do as a modern day church. As a modern day people of God. We pray and what the Lord would give to us, we would just spend it on our passions and desires. And therefore God will not reward you. He will not answer your request. And if He answers your request, it would be no. No one would want to preach this message, but I'm going to tell you the truth. This is what God says. James 4 verse 3. You pray, but you do not get because you pray with wrongful intent. When it comes to praying, it's about God's will and God's glory and what God will give you. Not what you want, but what you need, He will give you. Therefore, prayer should also be a lifestyle. Because if prayer becomes a lifestyle, we, we get to know God. And when we get to know His heart, we will want to ask things of the kingdom. First seek the kingdom and everything else shall be given unto you. But if you first seek the kingdom, you will know that what you have is enough. Because what you have is all you need. I wrote this down. If prayer is not consistent, if prayer is not consistent, miracles become like holidays only once a year. That should be a soul-shaking truth to the church today. That if prayer is not consistent, miracles become like holidays. It's only once a year. If prayer becomes a habit, miracles will become a lifestyle. When I look at the Muslims, the times they pray per day, when I look at the Jews, their devoteness to sit with the Lord in prayer, when I look at the everyday believer in Christ Jesus, I am shocked and now I understand why we feel so miserable as a church sometimes. Because the believer wants God to move, but the believer doesn't want to move. The believer wants to ask for so much, but put in so little. Let me tell you, you are the reason for your miraculous life sometimes. We are the reason. Because we say thank you for the food, thank you for the day, and that is our prayer life. Maybe five times a week. And that's not what prayer is. Prayer is getting down on your knees, thanking God for who He is, and for giving you life, for giving you breath, for giving you what you have. Because it's not because you are good. It's because His grace is dealing with you. And He lavishes his, his glory, what He has in plan, uh, in store for you. He is giving you. He's got plans for your life. And therefore Isaiah 55 says that as the heavens are higher than the earth, so His plans, His ways, His will is higher than ours. His thoughts are not our thoughts. How can we then reason with God when His thoughts are far higher than ours? Let us therefore be in prayer, persistent, knowing His heart, that we would carry out His will, reaching people. And then the things of this world will grow strangely dim. For what shall it profit a man gains all the world, but loses his or her soul? Let us connect with God in prayer, so that miracles would become a lifestyle. I want to go on to the next passage in the next few verses. It's in 1 Kings 18, verse 42 to 45. And it says, it's a passage about Elijah. And 
it goes as follows. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees. Because he wants to be on his lowest. And said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And seven times he said, go again. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, there is a cloud as small as a man's hand, as small as a fist, rising out of the sea. So he said, go up and say to Ahab, prepare your chariot, go down before the rain stops, before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind and there was a heavy rain. Let me tell you, there was drought in the land. Maybe there's drought that you're going through and that's why you need to persevere. But in this time of perseverance, you need to be persistent in prayer. Not praying once, not praying twice, not praying five times, not praying six times, but sometimes praying seven times per day, knowing that God will intercede. And when He gives something as small as a fist, when He gives something small, financially, emotionally, however the need may be, whatever the need may be, when you see something small, Zechariah 4 verse 10 says, Never despise the day of small beginnings, of a small start, of a small miracle, of something small. Because God still works in the, in the midst of something small. Let us therefore do like Elijah did. When he prayed six times, he didn't say, Now the Lord has betrayed me and the Lord has looked away. He prayed seven times. He kept on praying. I believe that till this day, he would have kept on praying until his death for that cloud to arrive. How hungry are you for your answer? How hungry are you to go through the storm, persevere, but praying, be persistent in prayer, knowing that God will do something. It increases your faith. It builds your character. Not just your physical character, but your godly character. It helps you grow closer to God because when you know His heart, you will want to live it out. You will want to reach the people. You will just then realize how cheap, how vain the things of earth actually are. Therefore, let us look up to the clouds, look into the heavens, and know that God will still answer us. I want to pray for each and every one that's persevering through a time and where you, where you feel like God has begotten you, left you alone for yourself. Let me tell you that when you connect with God again in prayer, when you know the maker of your soul, you'll seize plans for your life. You will know because you will step into what the Spirit leads you. Galatians 5 verse 25. Since we live by the Spirit, let's keep in step with the Spirit. The Spirit will help us. Even in times when we struggle to pray, the Spirit will intercede and help us with utterance. Therefore, let us persevere, but also be persistent in our prayer. It will bring us not only closer to God, but closer to His people. And everything, through this whole process, it will glorify Him because His presence will be made known. Let us pray together. Lord, this morning, we recognize need. We recognize that people have circumstances and they need Your helping hand. Your mighty hand to stir the waters. Lord, I pray that people's prayer life your church's prayer life will become a priority. Lord, that we will not just say thank you for the food and thank you for what we have, Lord, but that we will actually get to know who you are. Lord, because I believe prayer is relationship. Yes, it's a request that we sometimes ask, Lord, can you do this? Lord, can you do that? But it's more than that. It's a relationship. And Lord, sometimes when we wait, let it increase our faith. But when you answer, Lord, let us be satisfied with your answer. And even if it's small, 
I believe that there's still a miraculous thing that can work when small things grow. Because it started with a small cloud, but then the heavens broke loose and the rain fell. The wind was blowing. And in a land of drought, in circumstances of drought, a great rain came and watered the earth. I pray that your holy water, Lord, would rain down over people's life, over circumstances. I pray life into the people that ask for your help, Lord, people that are in need, people that long for you, Lord, that you would truly intercede because no man can do what you can do. So, Lord, we pray in your name, Jesus, that you would walk through the streets of people's heart, of people's circumstances, people's life, and touch them. Speak a word over them that they might know you still live. You're still in control. You still reign. You are still powerful. You are still the Alpha and the Omega. You are still the beginning and the end. The Holy One of Israel will not slumber nor sleep, but you will answer everyone who is in need. Thank you, Lord, that we can call upon your name because who else can we call? Because who else can do what you can do? As it says in Luke 1, 37, there is no impossible for the Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus, for your answers. May we always be satisfied with your answers and not substitute your no for our yes. May we be satisfied with who you are and with what you give because you don't give us what we want. You give us what we need. And may we be always filled with joy and fulfillment when that day comes. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, church. May you be blessed. Enjoy your week. God loves you.